A long time ago, when dinosaurs ruled the world, other species lived in fear of being eaten. Spear is also suffering from danger. He's one of the last few Neanderthals left in his region, and life isn't easy for him. Spear was walking back home after a rough day of fishing. When he heard heavy squeals, he immediately hides in a trunk as a dangerous pterosaur roams around looking for prey. Luckily, Spear escapes safely and continues his journey. As he gets closer to his cave, he hears his wife's cries. Spear throws away the fish and rushes after the sound. A bunch of horned tyrannosaurs have attacked his family and eaten away his innocent wife and kids. In anger, Spear throws his weapon towards the Tyrannosaurus. The dinosaurs get angry and surround Spear from all sides. The Tyrannosaurus's mother calls to the moth, and Spear returns to his cave, mourning the loss of his family. He couldn't bear the pain and thought of jumping off a cliff. But Spear keeps thinking about his family and decided to take revenge before dying. Later that day, he runs into a female Tyrannosaurus, Fan. Spear assumes her to be a part of the Horned Tyrannosaurus gang and gets ready to take his revenge. But Fan was just looking after her babies. This reminds Spear of his own family. Suddenly, the Horned Tyrannosaurus attacked out of nowhere. Spear protects the babies and knocks down the enemies. The babies are grateful for the act of kindness and cuddle around Spear. But then, the mother Horned Tyrannosaurus appears and eats up the innocent babies. Both Fang and Spear fight together and kill the intruder. The revenge is taken, but they can't bring back their families. Spear leaves the scene, but surprisingly, Fang is following him too. She feels lonely after the loss of her poor kids. Spear can understand her pain and joins hands to face future calamities together. Getting along with a dinosaur is no easy feat. Fang, with her insatiable appetite, constantly steals prey from Spear, leaving him with no choice but to eat bugs to fill his stomach. Despite the challenges, he continues to tolerate her presence as she is the only companion he has left. However, the absence of his beloved family weighs heavily on his heart. Next morning, Spear attempts to hunt again, but Fang yet again steals his food. Losing his temper, Spear starts fighting the dinosaur, making sure not to cause any serious harm. However, in her attempt to get more food, Fang breaks Spear's weapon, causing him to become even angrier. As they battle, a group of deadly snakes appears behind them. They rush in fear, but a flood is following them. While they manage to vanquish the anaconda and kill the snakes, Spear sustains severe injuries after falling down the waterfall. Fang helps him reach the shore and apologizes by returning his broken weapon. Finally, Spear can enjoy a hearty meal and his relationship with the Tyrannosaurus has improved. They continue their journey to find a better place to live. While traveling through the Arctic wilderness, Spear's eyes catch a glimpse of an injured mammoth separated from its skin. With a heavy heart, Spear and Fang attack and knock down the mammoth, driven by the primal instinct of survival. Despite his actions, Spear can't help but feel remorse for the loss of life. After finding shelter from the raging snowstorm, Spear's mind wanders to memories of his own family. Suddenly, the ground shakes as the mammoth family arrives seeking revenge. In a brutal beating, both Spear and Fang are left helpless. With a heavy heart and a will to survive, Spear grabs the dead mammoth's tusk and launches one final attack. The mammoths recognize the tusk and take it away as a symbol of their loss. With heavy hearts and mournful cries, the mammoths lay the tusk to rest in their self-made grave, accepting the fate of the cycle of life and death. Spear and Fang continue their journey, leaving the frozen region behind and reaching a warmer land. However, their troubles are far from over as a group of Comsignathus is trailing them closely. As night falls, 
the Comsignathus retreat to the fields, leaving Spear and the Tyrannosaurus to take shelter behind a cliff. The night appears deadly, with a blood-red sky and smoke everywhere. As they watch from their hiding spot, Spear and Fang spot a pack of wild humans being attacked by a giant red bat. Without hesitation, Spear rushes to their defense, but the odds are against them as more bats swoop in. In the chaos, Fang is knocked down and Spear is taken captive by the bats. Determined to rescue her friend, the Tyrannosaurus follows the bats to a cave but is unable to climb up to their perch. However, she comes up with a clever plan to play dead, allowing the bats to bring her into the cave. Inside, she finds numerous animals trapped in webs, this all done by a monster spider. Thankfully, Fang locates Spear in time and the two of them team up to battle the spider. Spear uses a dinosaur tusk to slay the beast and they make their escape using the webs to climb down the cliff. The bats, however, are still hot on their heels, but Spear has a trick up his sleeve. He leads Fang to the Compsignathus field, where the bats meet their end at the jaws of the hungry dinosaurs, while Spear and Fang emerge victoriously. After traveling a few miles, Spear and his loyal Tyrannosaurus finally arrive at a peaceful oasis. The cool breeze and serene surroundings make it the perfect spot for them to take a break not to mention the abundance of fish in the nearby lake that could satisfy even the biggest of appetites. After having a hearty meal, Fang marks the sand with his hand to show her affection towards Spear. The soft gesture makes the caveman smile immediately. Afterward, he gets in the water to have a bath while Fang proceeds to take a nap. When Spear returns, he finds out about the abduction of the poor Tyrannosaurus. Before he could figure out anything, someone hits on his head. Spear opens his eyes in an arena full of apes. Their leader calls to the strongest of them and announces a battle. The gorillas attempt to kill each other and only one of them is left at the end. This gorilla will have the honor of killing the Tyrannosaurus. Their leader feeds him with a drop of magic potion that turns the gorilla into a giant beast. Fang gives in his best, but she's no match to the giant beast. Spear can't take it anymore. He breaks free himself and chugs down the magic potion. It turns him into a powerful monster. Just in mere seconds, he takes down the gorilla and gets on a killing spree. The next morning, Spear rises from the pool of blood. His body is back to normal, but Fang is not showing any signs of life. Spear's eyes fill with tears and he says the last goodbye to his dear friend. Then suddenly, Fan calls him in pain. Spear rushes back and begins to treat the Tyrannosaurus, using mud to cover her wounds and giving her water to drink. Spear does his best to treat her injuries. However, hungry vultures in the area make it unsafe for them to stay so he uses ropes and sticks to create a makeshift stretcher and takes Fang into the woods. As night falls, Spear builds a fire to keep hyenas away from them. The next morning, he drags Fang all day and reaches a cave while the hyenas are still following them. Spear feels completely exhausted and takes a nap. His eyes open in the middle of the night when a bunch of deadly arthropods attacks him. Their shell is hard to break, so Spear attacks their bellies. He doesn't let a single bug hurt Fang. Spear can afford to lose his last loved one. After killing the bugs, Spear cooks them over the fire and feeds the Tyrannosaurus. The next day, they ran out of water. Spear drags heavy stones to close the cave entrance and goes out to bring water. When Fang opens her eyes, she can hear the hyenas fighting outside. Thankfully, Spear makes it back safely, but his body is full of scars. Fang gets angry and stands up to take revenge. Spear calms her down, as she hasn't fully recovered yet. He wears the arthropod shells as gloves and jumps out of fight. 
The swarm of hyenas takes over him, but Spear is giving them a tough time. Fang also walks into the battlefield, and together, they take down all of the intruders. Their journey is about to get riskier, as just a few miles away, a strange virus is affecting the sauropods. It melts down their flesh off the bones and turns them into bloodthirsty monsters. Spear reaches to the site where the infected sauropod had killed his mates. Little did he know, the monster is right behind him. Spear and Fang run blindly to save their lives. After passing the woods, they reach the cliff and slide down to take shelter in a cave. While the sauropod falls down hard on the ground, but he isn't dead yet. Spear doesn't dare to come out all day and even suffers from nightmares. He wakes up in the middle of the night and finds the sauropod sleeping soundly. This is a good chance to run away, but Fang is too afraid to do so. But they can't stay there forever. Spear walks away quietly and Fang follows him too. Just a few steps away from freedom, the sauropod wakes up. He screams wildly and runs after Spear and Fang. The huge sauropod gets trapped in between the cliff while Spear and Fang walk towards the volcanic ground. It starts to crack and the lava bursts out. Moreover, the sauropod has broken free too. Spear and Fang float over the lava and reach the other side while the sauropod burns into the ground. The adventure has been tiresome. But the journey must continue. Spear and Fang reach a place where they witness the strangest event of their lives. A man has been tied with the stones, and a group of old witches surround them. Then, their leader flies there on a pterosaur. She turns into a shadow monster and sucks out the man's soul. It forms a baby inside the monster, and she hands it over to one of the old witches. They all celebrate the occasion. But then, the pterosaur spots Spear and Fang. The witches follow them from all sides. Fang accidentally splits up from Spear and encounters one of the witches. The creepy witch casts a spell on Fang and knocks down Spear. The next morning, he finds himself tied to the stones. He's the next victim of the evil ritual. Spear cries to grab Fang's attention and the spell starts to weaken. The witch is shocked to see the unusual bond between a human and a dinosaur. She stops time and forms a magical portal. She goes back to witness Fang's past. It was at the time when she laid eggs and felt blessed to be a mother. But after a few days, the horned Tyrannosaurus killed her babies. The witch feels the pain and returns to the present with a heavy heart. Then she decides to see Spear's past. He also was a happy father who loved his children. But a cruel incident left him empty-handed too. The witch gets really sad and returns to her hut. She goes back to live her own past. She also had a daughter granted by their leader. She lived the best years of her life with a lovely child. But then, one day, while picking flowers in a field, the witch's daughter fell off a cliff and died. After returning to the present, she moans in pain. But now she can have a child again by sacrificing Spear. She paints his body with a strange liquid and waits for the night. Their leader arrives and starts the ritual, but the old witch doesn't want it anymore. She feels sorry for Spear and Fang. To protect them, she attacks their leader's pet. It triggers a deadly fight. The old witch fights her leader and guides Fang to carry Spear to escape from the scene. They run away safely, but the kind-hearted witch is eaten away by her leader. Maybe that's what she wanted. She wishes to ascend to heaven and unite with her late daughter. After the emotional roller coaster, Spear and Fang rest in the forest. The next morning, while looking for food, they find a half-eaten lion. It's a sign that a deadly beast is roaming nearby. As the night sets in, the beast starts looking for its prey. It finds a group of rhinoceroses and attacks them brutally. Their screams can be heard where Spear and Fang are resting. Spear picks up his weapon to follow the sound, but Fang stops him from doing so. It's better for them to stay away. The night has passed, but Spear and Fang can't let their guard down. They must leave this creepy forest as soon as possible, but the strong wind doesn't allow them. 
The night hits in again, but Spear and Fang can't sleep out of fear. After several hours of staying awake, their mind couldn't take it anymore and fell asleep. But they were woken up by a shrieking sound. It's drawing near. Spear and Fang bolt in the opposite direction, but the thick smoke makes it difficult to see where they're going. The shrieking grows louder and louder, fueling their terror. In a fit of frustration, Spear swings his weapon blindly and strikes a rock, igniting a small fire. Miraculously, the shrieking sound fades away. The beast seems to be afraid of the fire. Spear quickly sets fire to the surrounding forest. The beast is still as menacing as ever, but the fire proves to be its downfall, burning it to death. After the rough day, Spear and Fang rest to the shore, but peace isn't written in their fate. A woman runs towards them out of the water, followed by a sea monster. Spear is delighted to see another human being. After killing the sea monster, he follows the woman in the woods. She seems scared at first, but then she starts to trust Spear and his scary friend. The woman introduces herself as Mira. She seems to come from a civilized human tribe. Mira likes to cook her food with herbs and uses advanced weapons like a bow and arrow. Spear can't understand her language, so they communicate through drawing. Mira comes from a tribe of moon worshippers. Her people are being enslaved by a demon and she needs to help to save them. Spear offers his service and they travel toward her land. The journey is quite long, so they stop by a cave to rest. The next morning, a bunch of wild monkeys attack them and abduct Mira. Spear and Fang rush to save her, but she was already taken away by the enemy's ship. Will Spear be able to rescue Mira and his family? And who's the one behind all of this? To find out, let's wait for the next season.